Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport in the Premier League. We are now near the end of January. Today is going to be a Merseyside doubleheader. We're going to start off with Everton. We're going to finish with Liverpool. In between episodes, obviously, the January transfer window has opened. We have done some business. Three players joining the club. We have sold one player and loaned out four as well. So let's jump straight in. Talk about those first. The only player leaving the club on a permanent deal is Craig Rutter. He has left. He's signed for Stoke in the Championship. Already playing three games, getting an assist as well. He basically wasn't getting in the squad anymore. We've sold him for £850,000, which actually isn't a huge amount of money. But for somebody who's played three games so far this season for us, it's better than nothing. And if I'm perfectly honest, he wasn't that great, was he, when we signed him? I mean, he scored 5-27 in in the Championship and then 3-19 in in the Premier League. We've got much better now. We've also loaned out a couple of players to the MLS. Edson Helou is the first one to Atlanta United. He's going to go there until the end of the season. I think he needs some football. I think there's definitely something there of Edson. He just needs to play some football. And the American Logan McCrecky is also gone to the MLS signing for Houston Dynamo. So hopefully he gets some football there as well. Another young Brazilian has gone out on loan at this time to SPT in Brazil. I can never remember what names they are. They all, they've got all got acronyms in Football Manager and I haven't got like a real name fixed. But yeah, Helio Junior has gone out on loan. Hopefully he's going to play until the end of the season. I think he's actually was there last year, wasn't he? Yes, he was. So, uh, well, he got relegated. That's a good sign. He's played 28 times, scored a couple of goals from centre-back. Hey, hopefully he'll play 28 more. That'll be handy. We've also loaned out Luis Valadrez to Coventry. This is the first season in a very long time where he's not really playing for us. I don't think he's actually played for us this season. Obviously, we had him on loan for five years from Barnsley, signed him, and then we haven't really played him as much as we did when we had him on loan. But anyway, he's off to Coventry. They're not paying a single penny for him. I'm hoping he can do some business down in the Championship or maybe League One. I'm not sure. Three players joining the club then. First up, Arnard Sangare from ASEC Mimosas, one of my favourite teams. He has come in on a free transfer. I think he was out of contract completely. So I just went, well, we'll take it. You actually don't seem too bad. Two-star current ability, four and a half star potential. Physically, pretty decent. Mentally, he's got some reasonable numbers in there as well. Quite a few 12s and 13s. I'd, it'd be nice if they were a bit higher, but, you know, he's only 18 years old. Technically, some things are good. He can't finish for a striker, but he can learn, hopefully. Another youngster to join is Junior Manucci, who is a Peruvian central defender, signed from Alianzana in Peru. And again, I think he's good. I think he's got some... He's definitely got an upside to him mentally. The teamwork and work rate is basically what drew me to him. I do like the fact he's very brave as well. I mean, he does have some lacking mental stats, so determination could be a bit higher. Some of the off the balls and visions and things. Physically, he's also not bad. He's only 19 years old. He's probably going to go out on loan if somebody wants him, but I think he's all right. I think he's a decent player. He's come in for £525,000, which is, I think, a bargain. And finally, signing from Braga in Portugal, but formerly of HB China Fortune in his native China, is Wang Jiquiang. Possibly, he's just going to be called Wang. He is 23 years of age. He has come in for about £7 million, I think it was. 7.25. He was out of contract at the end of the season, and I kind of went... I want him now. I want him in the country as soon as possible. Hopefully, he's going to get a lot better. I mean, to be fair, on paper, he's actually very good now. Look at those mental stats. Look at those physical stats. Also, technically, his first touch and passing is spot on. He's probably going to get a fair amount of football for us. He has played twice already and was absolutely garbage in the FA Cup, getting a 6.4. So hopefully, he can turn that around when he starts playing a bit more regularly in the league. But yeah, that's our transfer business so far. Like I said, we're on the 29th of January, so there is a couple more days to go. We're going to be playing Everton at first before that window shuts. I don't think I've got any transfers might, that might be coming in, but there might be a couple of players leaving the club. Before we get to play Everton, though, let's have a quick look at how well we've done so far. We started off on the 1st of January with a 3-1 victory against Brentford, Rock Murray, Tommy Doyle and Damian Tilgo with the goals here. This was in the FA Cup third round. We then beat Crystal Palace thanks to Miro Butic. We lost 2-0 to Spurs. We beat Brighton, Mel Konyan, Acuna and Holovko with the goals here. We then played Brighton again in the FA Cup, drawing 1-1. Canate scoring a ridiculously bad goal. It was hilariously bad in this one. We got very, very lucky in that. And then against Sheffield United. United 2-1 here, Mel Konyan and Dramain Bamba. Bamba, by the way, it's actually really good at free kicks. He scored a free kick in that one. Everton then will be up first. We're then going to go all the way through till the end of February as well and play Liverpool. We are still up there. We are still somehow up fighting for a Champions League spot. I don't quite know how. 
I'm not going to question it too much, but yeah, we're, we're, still, we're still doing business. We're still doing the right thing. Local derby time number one of the episode, I guess, and our former feeder club, parent club. We were definitely the feeder club. Everton. They're, this is going to be tough, although we are definitely the better side in terms of performances. They have lost the last three games that they've played, which all of them 1-0. Blackburn, Fulham and Arsenal. They beat Newcastle and Leicester, but they're all the way down in 15th place. As I said, we are up in 5th. A victory against Everton will put us on to 45 points. Our goal difference is not great. So uh, we're not going to go ahead of Manchester United anytime soon on goal difference. But if we can just keep pace with them, that will be quite good. So the starting lineup for the Everton game then. It's going to be Varro in goal. Spadera, Acuna, Bamba and Javier Liao as our back. Four Liao has come in as a right back. Because Milosevic is not particularly match fit at the moment, we're having some problems on that right-hand side. We've got lots of injuries and fitness concerns going on. Also, I, d I don't know why you've done this, but Daniel Acuna, can we get a little bit of a closer view on your face? How do we do this? Is it attributes? We I mean, can't really see there, but he's gone and grown himself a lovely grey beard for January. Fair enough. In the middle of the pitch will be Hargreaves, Butic and Wang, with Halovko, Rock Murray and Rafik Melkonyan as our strikers. Everton weirdly still have Richarlison. He's still there, he's still going. They've also got Livakovic, who was my goalkeeper for the Sampdoria save. Spoiler if you haven't watched any of the Sampdoria save, I, I signed Livakovic. Come on then, let's do the double over the two Merseyside teams. I know we're at home for this one, I think we're away for the Liverpool game. If we're at home for both, we could actually do this. But in order to do this, we do need, you know, some highlights. I mean, some shots. There's been one shot in 25 minutes of football. That's... nothing's happening. Finally, something is about to happen. Butic's corner comes in. Wang is there. Livakovic comes out and claims it. So the Croatian international goalkeeper has the ball in his hands. He's going to start. What's he going to do? I've just seen. I'm pretty sure that's Thunder and Lightning. I'm pretty sure we're playing in a Thunder and Lightning storm. Daniel Acuna, the Mexican, has the ball. Plays it all the way back to Varro, our Serbian goalkeeper, if I'm not mistaken. Forward to Acuna. Up onto the left-hand side is Rock Murray. Murray needs an option. Spadera is the option all the way back, though, to Acuna. And all the way back to Varro once again. We seem to do this a lot. We like to go forward and then go all the way back to the goalie and try again. Dramain Bamba on the right is Javier Leal, the Guatemalan who's basically training up to be a left-back who's only one-footed, and that's his right foot. Butic to Wang. Wang needs to put in a decent performance. What a ball that is. Rock Murray is there, and what a superb save that is from Dominic Livakovic. We've got ourselves the corner to take, though. Miro Butic. I nearly said Mario. What a whip that was. Leokovic kicks the ball clear. They've got a Livakovic and a Leokovic. Spadera's picked up a yellow card. Everton have the ball. Niambi intercepted by Wang and now Wang's going to hopefully run forward with the ball the Chinese international gets tackled Holovko now the Ukrainian in on goal is he going to go it alone of course he goes it alone Livakovic makes a very easy save well the first half has kind of picked up it took a while to get going but in the last 10 minutes everything has happened Ryan Niambe with the ball the Namibian if I'm not mistaken Wendell inside his own half Torreya back to Wendell Manchester United 3-0 up against Crystal Palace so they're just extending their goal difference on top of us as well as the three points or technically at the moment I guess it's five points Zaracho in the middle to Torreya Zaracho's continued his run Wendell has it back to Mendes this is their Mendes not our Sebastian Mendes it's a lovely chest down from Richarlison into the goal it's an effort it's gone wide fair enough Two minutes to play the first half. Wendell crosses in. Leokovic is there. Doesn't win the header, though. Hargreaves gets it clear further. And now Holovko can run forward with the ball. He's not the fastest in the world. He's still got hold of it, though. Keeps going. Off towards that right-hand side. His natural position as that right winger. And just, just loses the ball, doesn't he? Javier Liao needs to get that first. Plays it back to Varro. So what are we going to do? On the ground to Hargreaves. The former Everton man, actually, Hargreaves. Butic. To Holovko on the right, keep it in play. He does. Number seven tries to take it round his man. Cuts inside, actually, instead. He's going to go straight to... <laughs> what a strange bit of football. He just passed it to Melkonyan, who was facing the wrong direction. We've won ourselves a corner. Butic is going to take it. Doesn't whip it this time. Wang's there. Doesn't go up for the header, though. Zaccardo has it. We've got 30 seconds of normal time plus one minute of injury time. Zaccardo runs down that right-hand side. Keeps going into the space. Into Wendell. Bit of space for him as well. Takes the deflection off Wang. It's going to be a corner for Everton. I don't want to concede right now. I mean, nil-nil at half-time is not ideal, but it's okay. Torreira's corner comes in. Ezio Spadera heads clear. Barco's going to collect it. We've got 45 seconds left of the first half. Wang steals the ball away, and that brings us to half-time, and it is nil-nil. I think we've been the better side. 
ish, I guess. There's no. Re I mean, we haven't been great, have we? Neither of the team's been great. I always forget to do this. Turn that shoot on site off. Melkonyan, Murray, and Butic all doing pretty badly. Holovko's had the best chance, I think, for us. It's an early highlight for Everton in the second half. Kamara goes for a headed effort. It goes wide of the post. Minutes and 30 seconds in. Well, Holovko, our best performing striker, has now picked up an injury. Great. Keith Hall. Keith Hall will be going over. I mean, do we play you as a striker? Do we play you as that advanced forward? You're not bad as an advanced forward. You're probably better than Melkonyan in terms of attributes. But Melkonyan is actually natural as an advanced forward. Literally, Melkonyan's dropped down to a 6.3 now the moment we move him onto that wing. Right, let's give them a get creative. So far, one highlight in the second half, and it was right at the kickoff, wasn't it? What a boring game of football. Melkonyan's coming off. Victor Gomez is going to come on on the right-hand side. We've got one final sub to do. It's going to be Butic for Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle really should be playing, but Butic and Wang are also really good at football. Doyle is our club captain at the moment, so I feel like he should be playing. But Wang and Butic are just better at football. Final five minutes. We've had one highlight in this entire second half, haven't we? Show some passion. Do something. Four minutes of injury time. Not a lot is going on. It's a full time then against Everton. It's a nil-nil draw. I guess that's all right, isn't it? I guess we'll take it. We have no choice. We can't, like, reverse time and have another go. Somehow, though, we do stay in fifth place. What happened? Wolves beat Brentford. So they've closed the gap. Man City have yet to play. Or did they play? They did play. They beat Arsenal. So uh, I, realistically, what's going to happen? Wolves, City and Spurs are probably going to start winning some more games. We're going to drop a few more points. And then that's where they're going to leap over us, basically. Man City have lost 10 games this season. 10. That's ridiculous. Oh, great. And Holov goes out for three to five weeks. Wonderful. Right. We're going to go forward then until transfer deadline day first. And then I'm going to play four matches, three matches, something like that in February, and we'll return for the Liverpool game. Well, the transfer window has now closed. We have brought two more players to the club. We've also sold one on a permanent deal, and a couple more have gone out on loan. Ivo Kazakov has left the club. He has signed up for Cardiff. I'm not sure what league Cardiff are in, but yeah, he's gone to Cardiff for £700,000, I think, in total. 775 after everything has been paid off. So we've lost a bit of money on Ivo Kazakov. He got eight goals in the season we got promoted. So I'd say it wasn't that much of a loss. Yes, technically, financially, it is a loss, but he wasn't playing. We also got promoted after we spent £1.8 million on him. I'm claiming it's a good transfer, okay? We've also loaned out Alsane Kanate, who has actually played a few games of football for us this season. He's gone out on loan to Havre AC in Ligue 2 in France. He's gone out on loan basically because he's a central midfielder. Yes, he's played 14 times, scoring three goals, most of them actually, or quite a few of them off the bench. But we've brought in, obviously we've brought in Wang. We've also brought in another central midfielder who's more of an inside forward on the right-hand side. But yeah, he's not going to get the chances, I don't think. Maybe next season he might. So starting off then with our transfers, first up is Moroccan left-back Bilal Boularoud, who has been signed from IR Tanja, I think is where we signed him from. I was looking through the Moroccan side, he was out of contract, and I went, mentally, good numbers, determination and work rate, I like that. Physically, he's got some very good numbers there. He's 20, which I wasn't quite sure of what to do. He's cost £9,000. He was going to be a free transfer, like I said, but I kind of wanted him in early, get him learning the language and all that jazz. And that's kind of the same thing with Roberto Lopez, the 24-year-old Portuguese footballer. He can play as a defensive midfielder, a left winger, a central midfielder, an inside forward on the right, or a striker. He's probably going to be an inside forward on the right-hand side. That's what I want to play him as. He's come in, he's cost £2.9 million. I could have waited until the end of the season, but he's basically come in to be the Craig Rutter replacement. So he's not necessarily going to get a huge amount of football, but I think he will get a decent amount of football on that right-hand side. So then, transfer windows have closed. We have spent £60 million this season. Our second season in the Premier League, we spent £60 million. Last season, I'm not quite sure how much we spent. It was around 40 by the looks of that. We can just, we can do that, can't we? we can just pay 47 is what we spent last season. We spent £60 this season. We've also sold £15.25 million worth of players. So we're investing. We're definitely in investing in our squad. And now I'm going to go forward and play Brighton, Aston Villa and Manchester United off camera and we will return for the Liverpool game. Three further matches then have been played. We have progressed in the FA Cup eventually after extra time against Brighton. We've also played Aston Villa and Manchester United in the league and we somehow managed to beat Manchester United. 
So yeah, we beat Brighton eventually, 2-1 it was after extra time. Miro Butic with a goal, Victor Gomez scoring his first, his first, his fourth goal, sorry, for the club after 104 minutes. We kind of got a bit lucky in that one. Aston Villa are the greatest team on the planet Earth. They battered us. They absolutely dominated us. We did manage to score through Kiefer, but lost 3-1. And then against Manchester United, we went 1-0 up. Rafik Melkonyan, they then equalised early on in the second half. And then Eugene Holovko came off the bench, scoring the winner in the 92nd minute of 96. We ended up playing in total. Somehow we managed to steal three points against Manchester United. But... Because we're starting to drop quite a few points in various matches and everyone else has actually caught up in terms of matches played, we have dropped out of the top six. However, we're joint with Spurs and Man City on 46 points. They're fifth and sixth. We are currently in seventh because our goal difference is it's average, isn't it? It's, it's average. It's not great. And now we have to play Liverpool. Great. I mean, we've beaten them. I'm going to hold on to that. The fact that we beat them back when we were in League One so many seasons ago. We've already beaten Liverpool. We can do it again. And we've just beaten Man United at home as well. Before we start the Liverpool game, I need to shout at you. I need to shout at you. I need to warn you because of your recent form. You have been absolutely awful, Rourke Murray. You've been absolutely awful. I mean, what do I say? Yeah, you need to perform harder. So, yeah, basically... A 6.48 is his last five games. A 6.3 against United, 6.4 against Villa, a 6.8 against Brighton, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. He's just been nothing. Since he basically, I think he picked up an injury. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, he must have done. And then since then, he's been garbage. So he's not going to play this game. The starting lineup then for the Merseyside derby number two of the episode. It's going to be Varro in goal, Liao, Acuna, Bamba and Milosevic as our back. Four, it's going to be Butic, Wang and Tommy Doyle in the middle. Miro Butic is going to be playing as that deep line playmaker on defend, which he can't really do. However, a deep line playmaker on defend in the middle of the pitch, he kind of can. So I'm just shifting him back a bit and it means that we can play Tommy Doyle. We can also play Wang. Basically, Hargreaves, let's have a quick look at Cameron Hargreaves. He's not that good, if I'm perfectly honest. He's all right. For a side just getting promoted into the Premier League, he was a decent player. For the side that we are now, I don't think we really need him. So I'm going to start to sort of phase him out. I'm going to start to basically play Miro Butic in that deep line playmaker position. It's going to be Damian Tilga and Eugene Tolovko on the wings today with Rafik Melkonian as our striker. Rock Murray is on the bench because Tolovko has, uh, he's not really supposed to play 90 minutes. He, he probably will. I have also made sure that I've turned off take the long shots thing. I had it turned on for the Brighton game and the Aston Villa game, and we didn't do particularly well. I turned it off for the uh, for the Manchester United game, and obviously we scored twice and won the game. So I'm hoping that is part of the problem that's now been fixed. Harvey Elliott's in on goal. Forces, a, I was going to say, forces a save out of Varro. He doesn't. It's 1-0 to Liverpool. They are top of the table, in my defence. Why did I pick this game to show? Like, why did I? Why do I think this is the one that will be entertaining? This is the one where we're just going to get beaten 4-0. I love the fact that my assistant manager is telling me I should play Miro Butic in a more familiar position. No, I refuse to do this. I had the same problem in the Sampdoria save where I was playing a player out of position. They were going, oh, play someone better. Play him in a more familiar position. He was the best player on the pitch. Butic will be our best player at the end of this match. Linez with a free kick for Liverpool. Five minutes to go in the first half. Ivan Beltran is there. 2-0 against Liverpool then. It's it's not going well. I mean, to be fair, it was never going to go well. It's Liverpool. They're probably the best team in the country. They are the defending champions. They're currently top of the table now by, what is that, seven points? Butic with a free kick. we got three minutes to play. Big, big dids. It's not big dids. Big dids play for Newcastle. Rafik Melkonyan is there, though. Melkonyan makes it 2-1. He's celebrating, but we are still losing the game. Dramain Bamba, by the way, got second place goal of the month for January. He also got second place player of the month behind Miro Butic for January. So we had a decent January. We're not having such a good February. We are 2-1 down against Liverpool. We're actually doing okay, I'd say. I think we're doing all right. Let's just get Colo to do that. Colo's done a decent team talk there. Wang, Tommy Doyle, Tilga and Holovko all playing pretty badly, which is kind of normal. We've done no changes at half-time and already a minute and a half in. Liverpool have the ball on the edge of our penalty area. Dramain Bamba's kicked him over. That's going to be a penalty if it's anything, because it certainly was inside the area. It is a penalty. Dramain Bamba early on in the second half, then conceding it. 
Come on, Varro. Come on, Varro. You can do this. Who steps up? It's TAA against Varro. Varro goes the right way, and the young Serbian wonder kid goalkeeper makes a save, and then TAA just kicks Javier Liao. Wonderful. Well, Varro's doing all right. Varro's doing all right. Butic is doing all right. Rafik Melkonyan's doing all right. Linez with the corner. 51 minutes. Greenwood is there. Headed effort goes over the bar. Is that Mason Greenwood? That is Mason Greenwood, isn't it? It is. Great. Our midfield is just not doing anything. Something is not working here. Something is not working with those two. Maybe we just need to change you to Mazala on support? 6.4 and 6.5 and same with the wingers as well. Something's just not happening. I don't really know what to possibly do here. Maybe we maybe we just turn that off. Do what you want to do. Just do what you want to do in the middle of the pitch. Maybe we turn those off as well. Do what you want to do further up the pitch. And that's all, that's all we do. Maybe that's the thing. And also, we'll, we'll bring off Wang. Wang's not having a good game. We'll do Keith. Keith Hall. I know he's not a Mazala. He'll be fine. Milosevic is also looking exhausted. Well, I don't really have a right back on the bench because old what's his name, Luke Matheson is still currently injured. He will be back soon, but Milosevic is just going to have to deal with it. Since I've told them to do what they want, we haven't really done a huge amount, but nor of Liverpool. I say that as a highlight begins. It's TAA on the right-hand side. He's missed a penalty so far in this match. He's just ran into the penalty area because nobody closed him down. Varro makes a very simple save. Six minutes left to play. We're going to do ourselves a sub. It is time for Rock Murray to redeem himself. We're also going to have Yale Liao off for Cameron Hargreaves because Liao's playing badly, so we can't play any worse. Come on, Rock Murray. Now's your time. Anything? We do have a highlight. Great. We are 37 seconds over the 94. Tilga to Hall. Across to Tommy Doyle. The former Man City man loses out to Florentino. And now Liverpool just going to walk the ball into the back of the net. Rojas goes for goal. Federico Rojas makes it 3-1. It's, it's not the best of episodes, is it, really? We've had two matches on camera. We've scored one goal. We've lost to Liverpool. We've drawn with Everton. We did beat Man United, but you didn't see any of that. It's not, it's not been good, has it? It's not been a good day at the office. I must remember, though, we are way, way performing above what we're expected to be doing. We are seventh place in the league, joint with sixth place Man City. They do have a game in hand, though. I think, basically, from this point onwards, we are going to start losing touch with the top six, which is what I said earlier. I can't see us keeping pace with them. We've got... How many games left have we got to play? And do we have many of the big boys? We've got Leicester up next which is a cup game, so that's irrelevant. Brentford, Southampton, West Brom. I mean, they're all no one massive. Chelsea, and then we end with Man City and Arsenal. So, uh, yeah, we we might be lucky. We might be lucky to keep up with them, but I don't see it happening, if I'm perfectly honest. That's going to do it then for this episode. Next episode, what we will do, we will do Southampton and West Ham. I think that's what we're going to go for. So I'm going to go play Leicester and Brentford off camera. If we do all right against Leicester... I think we might be in an FA Cup quarterfinal. Is that the next stage? It is an FA Cup quarterfinal if we beat Leicester. If we get to the quarterfinal, I'm probably not going to show that either. Semi-final is where the FA Cup gets a bit interesting because we might get to a final. Quarterfinal is just, a, it's just another match, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2020 with Southport. It was a reasonable effort, I guess. We picked up four points out of four games which isn't ideal, but we, we've, we're we still up there. We're still doing all right. Next episode, as I mentioned, it's going to be Southampton. It's going to be West Ham. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you're new here and you would like to see more, hit that subscribe button. I'll be back next time with one of the last episodes of the season, I guess, because after the West Ham game, we've not got a lot of football left to play.